I'd like to talk to you this evening about the subject, very important subject. Guns alone cannot defeat tyranny. I tried to record this the other day, and uh, I went through about four tries, and it just didn't work out. Um, because it's a very uh, sensitive subject, very something I think it's very important, especially with where America's headed right now, in the future. Um, America has more gun owners than any other nation that's ever existed. Scientific, historic fact. Um, provable, demonstrable, the whole thing. No question. Well then, we'll never be conquered because America has the most gun owners. Uh, not so. Um, might makes right. Not true. Um, there's a more important ingredient there than simply having a gun. Um, guns are inanimate objects. And in order for you to use the gun to its true benefit, to the way it should be used, you have to have the right mindset. Um, there are a lot of people that uh, get into a bad situation and they have to pull a gun and they panic. Um, and they don't shoot correctly or whatever else. I mean, I've seen trained police officers that do an absolutely terrible job when it comes to actually uh, engaging a criminal. And they're just shooting wildly into somebody's house or whatever else. It's terrible. Um, just having a gun doesn't mean you can stop a tyrant with it. What does it take? Well, the old saying goes, um, give me liberty or give me death. It's an old hymn. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. Some great cause, some great decision offering each the bloom or blight and the choice goes by forever twixt that darkness and that light. If you don't know that old hymn, look it up. Once to every man and nation. One of the most beautiful old hymns ever written. Um, absolutely amazing. What's the point? The point is, there comes a point, a moment, where you have to decide, where you have to say, you know what? I don't want to live in this world anymore if it's going to go this direction. I don't want to be here and see the nightmare that's coming in and my children are going to have to go through this. Something needs to happen. And if I have to shed my blood in the cause of liberty, if I have to die, if I have to give my life to say enough is enough, then I will do it. And you don't need huge armaments and whatever else and fully automatic rifles and whatever. You don't need any of that stuff. Oh, well, we need to have equal firepower to the U.S. military in order to engage them. First of all, you wouldn't be engaging the U.S. military because I don't believe the U.S. military, there's some of them that are really stupid, but a lot of them, they aren't going to engage the American people. Uh, but there's a foreign army that's been brought in and uh, saw some of them today. Way up here in Northern Maine, just walking aimlessly along the woods, roads, you know, whatever. And, you know, I just want to make a point here because it ticks me off. Well, you know, you're white. You would have been, you know, a foreign in, in, uh, immigrant or whatever else at one point in time, too. Uh, no, not like these modern ones. You see, when my ancestors came here in 1720, they didn't just show up and just aimlessly walk around towns and scope out what people had. No, they got to work. They worked hard. They were farmers. They didn't take their liberty and their freedom for granted. And the government sure didn't give them any money. Or here's this free cell phone and whatever else. Driving along the road, some devil, and he's, he's on his cell phone. D didn't even move. I'm supposed to get around, out around the guy or something. If I'd have hit him, it would have been racist, uh, some kind of thing or whatever else I'd have been charged for it. Or Lord only knows what. They come here, they don't have any respect for this country. You know, I went to Costa Rica twice in the past and Honduras once. And you know what I did when I got there? I forced everyone to speak English and I didn't eat their food. And I just said, I'm not assimilating to your culture. No, I, I went down there and I tried to speak Spanish as best as I could. And I ate their food that was put before me. And I said, uh, gracias, you know, that's their word for thank you. I assimilated to their culture. These illegals aren't assimilating to ours. Just like they're not doing over there in the UK. 
and all throughout Europe, raping women and doing all the other things. It is a satanic movement. That's what's going on here. And I will speak against it. You want to try to arrest me? Try it. Just go ahead and try it, wicked devils. It's not happening. Um, if I do something, if I've done anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die, the Apostle Paul said. Well, I haven't done anything worthy of death. So don't even try to come and arrest me. I'm a man of God. I'm a Christian. My faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I abide by his written word, the King James Bible. And my King James Bible in the book of Acts chapter 17 said that God set boundaries. Why? So that those people would feel after the Lord. And when you destroy those national boundaries, when you destroy the culture of the people, and you just say, there are no nations. It's just globalism. I'm a citizen of the world and everything. Yeah, guess what? People become more pagan. You come into this nation now, it's just a, a mixing pot, a melting pot of, of just all kinds of beliefs and everything else. It's so difficult. I mean, as a preacher, I have to know how to answer so many different cults and so many different things and whatever else. It's insanity. It wasn't that way when I was, even when I was a boy. Back in the, it was born in 1975. Growing up in the 1980s and things, it wasn't this way. Not at all. But it's being done on purpose. I'm not for it. You're not for it if you're an American. You know that. These wicked things are being done to us. And I'll give you another example of a man that, uh, I use the word man loosely, but uh, there's a guy on YouTube I heard about. Uh, FPS Russia was the the channel name and whatever else. I think the guy's name was Kyle Myers or something. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. And um, he had a federal firearms license or something like that because he had his little fully automatic guns and, and things, which you don't really need. But uh, that's another story. It's my opinion, I guess. But I think it's kind of stupid to have stuff like that. But whatever. If you want to have that stuff, great. Good for you. But I'm not going to... You know, you go and you're going and getting permission from the government. Um to have guns and whatever else, and then you do something wrong and they come and take them, which is exactly what they did to him. Well, then he, by going and getting a federal firearms license, he willingly gave up his Second Amendment rights because he got some kind of drug charge or something like this, and, and next thing you know, they're coming and taking his guns. I think he's, I remember the video, I haven't seen it in a long time, but it's something about, I think it was over $400,000 worth of firearms that they came and took from him. Did he fight? Did he stand up and say, you will not take my ability to defend myself. You will not take... No, of course not. What's he doing? Got a little video game channel or something. <laughs> and you'd say, well, yeah, but Brother Brian, he was, he was partly in the wrong because he did a drug thing. But he still gave up his Second Amendment rights by going and getting permission from the government to get certain guns that you can't normally get. You know, the whole Branch Davidian thing years ago. David Koresh and all the little nuts down there and everything else, Seventh-day Adventist nuts. Guy was a sex pervert and, I mean, just wicked man. But one of the ways that they made money is that they would convert semi-automatic rifles to fully automatic rifles. Well, they let their license expire and they didn't pay a fee for a number of firearms. ATF came up, showed up and whatever else, came in, saw their kooky beliefs, and there's probably a lot more involved, MK Ultra and Lord only knows what else. But uh, came in there, raided it, the gun shoot out and all the other stuff. And, um, you know, dry run for, I guess, trying to take guns away from Americans. Uh, did their stands, did their beliefs and things help them? No. No, it didn't. Uh, you need more than just guns to fight tyrants. If you haven't figured out that whole thing yet. Um, the question has to come into your mind. Am I ready to die? What is my liberty and what is my freedom worth to me? If they pass some kind of a law, if they come along and they say, you know what, and, and these uh, liberal Democrats and whatever else, and you know, let's face it, I mean, I don't trust Trump for one second on the whole gun rights thing. He's a, he's a speech reading actor, liberal city boy from New York, and I'm supposed to trust him. I don't think so. They want to take the guns away in this country and they are going to keep on trying, they will die trying. But uh, what if they pass something? At that point in time, you have to ask yourself a very serious question. Are you ready to die? Is your liberty so important that you would be willing to fight to the death? 
Do you know where you're going to go when you die? Do you have any kind of an assurance? Do you understand your God-given rights as they relate to Scripture? Constitution can be just overthrown at any time. Constitution, is, it is just there to reaffirm what God gave you. Your God-given rights, okay? Let me explain it. Because man is a, tri is a tripartite being. You have three parts, all right? Um, you're not a trinity. You are a tri tripartite being. God's not a trinity either. He's a tripartite being apartheid being, but uh, a lot higher order than we are. Um, you have three things, three parts to you. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. Three parts to one being. You're looking at a being right now, a person, you yourself, you have three parts. All right. What do you have? Your body, bodily integrity. No one can tell you what to do with your body, all right? what to put into your body, uh, how to look, whatever else, nobody can tell you that. You have that freedom from God. Number two, soul. You have personal defense, you have the right to defend yourself. That weird gut feeling you get sometimes when there's danger, you say, wait a second, I don't feel right. That's the soul. Then you also have the spirit, the spirit of your mind, the Bible talks about. You also have the right of a conscience, freedom of conscience, all right? So let's go over those again, bodily integrity, personal defense, liberty of conscience, freedom of conscience, whatever you want to call it. Give me liberty or give me death. If I can't make up my own mind, if, if I'm being told that I can't defend myself, if I'm being told that I can't take care of the bodily integrity that God has given me, then we have a problem. But you see, here's the more important thing. What happens when you die? What happens, where do you go? Can you trust the Bible? The Bible says that there are two places that you will end up, heaven or hell. You say, ah, come on, I don't believe in that hell stuff, whatever. Okay, you don't have to. Um, God is not going to force you to believe that. He gives man free will. I personally choose to believe in heaven. And I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I'm not going to ever be good enough to get into heaven with my own merits. So I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe the gospel. I call upon him to be saved and he's, he saved me. He changed me, changed my whole life. Changed me from the just dirty, miserable, wretched sinner that I was and just gave me a completely new life. Um, the, the punishment that I deserved for all the wicked things that I've done, God renewed me. He quickened my spirit and made amazing things happen in my life. He can do it for you as well. And then you can be ready to die. You say, well, you know, okay, if they come for the guns, it's not worth me dying about it. Man, come on, calm down, man, take a chill pill. Uh, okay, then you can live in a golden cage. Um, I am of European stock. Um, I'm a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I'm not a papist. I'm not a Catholic. I don't, I find it detestable to think of a man over in Italy uh, with a white robe on, little white slippers, and a little you know white grapefruit on his head. Not a grapefruit. I know I'm just being sarcastic, but uh, you know I find it detestable to think that that guy can say things and I have to follow him, even if it goes against my God-given rights, my conscience and things. That's not acceptable to me. Um, I require the right to protest. That's why I'm a wasp, and um, wasps like to be left alone. They don't want to just go out and sting people and attack people. But if you mess with a wasp, even if you're bigger than the wasp, that wasp is going to come and sting you. And that's me. I don't want any trouble from anybody. I like getting along with the police and things. I, I've talked to many police over the years, see them in a gun store or whatever, get good conversation. I've, I've met some really neat police officers up here. I've met some tyrannical police officers, and you know what? I'm still able to talk to them. Um, I don't want any trouble with the government, police. I don't want to overthrow the government, have anarchy or whatever. Else. I'm not interested in it. But if there are unconstitutional laws passed and they want to come and take away my freedom, my freedom to control my life, that's not okay. You better get your life figured out. You better get your eternity figured out because time is running out.